next sessions i will i, I will explain you how we can specifically use or efficiently use logrus with the gain framework for logging into our application now this session will let us know what is logrus how we can install and use logrus what are the log levels in logrus how we can log messages to multiple options using logrus how we can format the messages and finally we'll understand what are log with field and log with fields in logrus and how we can use it now let's start with the below program so in this program what i have done is this program is using gain since this session is this playlist is targeting gain so i have created a new router using gain where i have said okay if the router is slash if the route is get data call the get data handler and this handler will return a json format with a http status code of 200 and it will return saying data hi i am the get data method now let's talk about what you have to do if you want to use logrus in this existing application or in this program now to use logrus what you have to do is you have to import this package that is github.com syrupson and slash logrus now after importing you have to use and install this package right so first important point is install now for installing there are two ways one is you use go get command and the second after using the package in your uh, program you just use go most id and that will do the job for you so let me first tell you how you can do it using go get command if i will go to my console i will say go get and then i will give the name github.com logrus let me check the spelling for you s i r u p s e n github.com perfect now using this command it has installed logrus in my local system and the beauty of this command is if i have just given the name of the package it will automatically instant the latest stable version available uh, within this package or the framework let me remove it for you now with respect to you now i have imported and installed logrus in my application now to use it let me show you by using println a method used by logrus that says hi i am logrus okay now what this println is println is one method that is already provided by the gold standard library so this println method is written on top of it so this println method will have certain more information that logrus has embedded within the standard output method println of the standard go library now let me show you what exactly i meant by that if i open the window and i will say go run main dot go so it has started the api but before that since before starting the api here we are printing the message let's see what it has printed so this is what it has printed so it, if this println would have been of the go standard package library it would have printed only hi i am logrus but since this is of the logrus that this is of the logrus package so it is printing some extra information like time level and additional things as well so this is how basically you can uh, install and use logrus in your application now let's talk a bit more about what logrus provides us now the first thing that logrus provides us is the log level now let me tell you what exactly i mean there when i say log level or what is a log level so log level is a way of determining the severity or the priority of any type of event now logrus offers different level log levels say panic fatal error info debug and trace and there's a sequence associated with it if you see in my screen so these are all the log levels provided by the logrus and they work in the same sequence now these are trace debug info warn error factor panic now what i can do is i can attach a log level to each of my log within my application i'll show you in a bit of how we can do it and if i will say the global log level at a logrest level say for example is trace so it will print everything because everything is below trace now say for example i'll say the global log level is warn so my application will not print anything in the log above our warn rather it will print everything below warn in the level and now let me show you what exactly i meant by that is so first let me remove this logrus printf and 
I have already copied over this level code for you. Now here, you see here, I'm setting the level of the log rust as a trace level. So trace level is the topmost in the hierarchy. That means whatever log level I'll print in my messages, it will print everything. Now you see, what are these trace ln and debug ln messages? That means I'm saying log rust or trace ln and trace, that means print trace and the level for this trace will be trace because I'm using trace ln. The print debug and the level for this, log level for this will be debug because I'm using debug ln similar for info, warning, error, panic, and there is one petal as well. Now, all these highlighted here, trace ln, debug ln, info ln, warn ln, and error ln are just for printing and there's a specific meaning for petal and panic. So let me just comment out the petal for you and run only panic because when we'll have both of them because the both of them will cause the application to exit. So if I'll call panic first, petal will not be printed. And if I'll print petal first, then panic will not be printed. So let me, the purpose here is just to make you understand the log level. And I will also explain you after that of what exactly I meant by this panic and uh, petal here. So now let me run the application for you. You see, now in terms of printing, since the log level is trace here, so it has printed trace, debug, info, warn, error, and panic. You see, everything is printing. Now we are getting error here, right? That's because of this panic. I'll explain you that in a bit. I'll explain you this in a bit. Now let me do one thing. Let me set the trace level to debug. Now since the log level is set to debug, that means it will not send trace this time because trace is above the debug level in the log rest, log, log level hierarchy. Now let me run the program again for you. Now let's come back, you see, so trace is not printed. This is how log level works in log rest. Now let's understand about this panic. Now let's understand what the documentation says. It says panic and then logs a message at level panic on the standard level. So whenever in Golang we call panic, that means application will exit with a log with a status code of two that it says it will an error. It will be an error. So that is the reason that the, this is what my application is printing and it is saying, okay, there is some error and add this message and it is exiting with a status code of two. Now, for example, I will comment panic and I will have fatal, the same fatal means, you see, Fatal logs are method at a level fatal on the standard logger, then process will exit with a status code of one. That means if we'll use fatal, it will also exit by printing the message to the standard logger. Same is for panning. Only difference is this will give you the information that exit code is one. This is give you the information exit code is two, and each code has their specific meaning with respect to the operating system. Now let me print here. I've commented panic, I've printed you see. The application is not even started the router. It is just exiting. So this is the difference. Now, if I will say both of them are here, so what will happen is application will exit at panic and it will never print fatal. Let's see above, you see, panic and it does not print the fatal at all. Okay. Now let's remove this log level here. And I'll say let's have it to the trace level. Let me remove it and let me close this for you. Now let me understand. Now let, let us understand what is the support for printing and logging messages uh, within the log rest. So using log rest, we can print messages to the console, we can print messages to the log file, and we can print messages to the log file and the console as well. So now for that, there is a method called set output in log rest. So similar to this set level, say for example, I, I can say here log rest dot set output and here I'll say OS dot standard error. I can say standard input, standard output, there are many things. I'll say to the standard output, that simply means that I'm targeting log rust to write message to the standard output only nothing. Else. What if I want to write the messages to a file? What I have to do? Let's do it. 
Now, what I will do is let's comment the standard output first and let me show you about the file. So I'll create a file, say, os.create and the file name should be logrus.log and here I'll say logrus dot set output to what to the file. That is all I have to do. Right. And now let's do one thing. And if I want to print certain messages, I'll just remove panic. And this is what I am printing. Okay, now let's see what I have done here is I have set the log level to trace. That means I have to print everything. I am saying log res that, okay, create a file. I'm saying my OS package actually to create a file called log res log and set the output to that file. So I do not want to print anything to the console rather than I want to print everything to a file. And if you see, there is no file currently, but it will have a file once I'll run the program and then we'll initiate the router for me. So this is what I am currently saying it. Now let's run the program and check what exactly I mean by that. And if I run the program, what my program will do, you see what it has done is it has created a file log dot log and it has printed the error for me in that file. And there is no, you see, there is no logging done to the standard out. Let me close it. Now, what if I want to do logging in the standard output as well as in the file? What I have to do? Very simple. I can just make use of io.multiwriter in this case. So what I will do here is after creating this, I will say multiwriter equal to io dot multiwriter where I will say this is my file and os dot standard output and in the set output method I will just part the multi so just by these two lines of code I can say to my loggers that okay I want to write everything to the file as well as to the standard logger. Now let's go to the file, remove everything from the file and let's run the program again for you. See, if I run the program again, it has logged this to the console. And if I'll go to the log rest file, it has logged this as well to the console. Same thing is logged to the console. Now, what if I also want to log the Kali method name, file name, and the line number as well in case of error in logging, what we have to do? What or what I have to do for that? Let me tell you what exactly we have to do. And that's a very easy thing at a log rough level. Now to do that, there's a method called set report caller in log rough. And we just can set that method at a global level where I say log rough dot set report caller. And I'll say, okay, what I want is I want to give you and I want to you to set the call name, the line number and everything whenever you send the log for me. Now let's see how the, it will make a difference. Now let me run the program for you. Let me do allow access here. Now let's go back, you see. Now, now the logging has actually changed. Now you see in the log as main.go file, now there is two more things that has started coming. One is it says, okay, the name of the function is main package, main function, file information is this, and this is line number 28 where this message is being printed. See, line number 28. Now, line 29, 30, 31, 32, now the same is there. You see how flexible this logrus library is. It, it's giving you a lot of information or a lot of things that you can do with loggers by just calling their default method, right? First, let's understand how we can uh, format the existing log by adding date and time to the out, right? In the text formatter. Now, let me show you how we can do that. I will say 
logger dot set formatter. Now this method, what this method will uh, us receive is logger a type of a dex set formatter. Now inside that you see this formatter is receiving a text formatter. It's a struct. Now you see we can give a lot of information to it. Now this struct has set true to bypass checking for the TTY before outputting color, force color, disable color, this. Now let's use something from it. It says disable timestamp. System that already are timestamp, I want to disable it. Okay, full timestamp. Disable timestamp, full timestamp, disable sorting, sorting function. Let's use disable timestamp and full time. Let me do one thing. I'll say disable timestamp. I'll pause the value as true. And then I will say full timestamp and I will say false. What I'm saying to, to my formatter is disable the timestamp that you're printing with the log. Now let's see whether it does it or not. Let me remove it for you. So go run main dot go. Okay, I said run. Let's go to the console. You see, it has removed the time. Now, if I will say disable run timestamp to false and run the program again for you here, so what it will do is you start printing the time. You see now time stamp is done. You see how easy it is to format data in a specified structure format that logras is already provided to you, right? Now let's understand uh, what has to be done if I want to change the formatter, right? So here I have said, okay, set formatter by default, it's a text formatter only, but I have just made some changes to the what we are logging. Now, instead of text formatter, let me use JSON formatter. So now this JSON formatter has their own properties within this class. This time start format, disable timestamp, disable STFSK, data key, if any, field map, pretty print, color pretty fire. Now let's see pretty print to true. I'm saying pretty print is the JSON pretty print. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do it like this. So by using this formatter, what will happen is, Everything that will be printed as a log will be printed as a JSON. So currently this is not a JSON, right? You can see my screen here. Now let me close it, clear the screen for you and run the program. The only change I have done here is JSON format and I have used it. Now see, now it has started printing everything in a JSON format and I have disabled the timestamp. Now let me do one thing. I'll say timestamp is true and pretty print is true. So what it will do is, it will print JSON in a pretty format for us. This is one very interesting property about this, you see? Because every one of us would like to read the log in a proper JSON format, you see? Every log that is being printed here is in proper JSON format and it has been done using the pretty print. This is another very useful property of log run. Now, there are certain methods, those are de by default provided by the logras for logging. Now, th those are like uh, logras with field, logras with field. With these methods, we can add specific values to our, the values specific to our use case into the log. Now, let me show you by writing an example of it. Let me close it and let me close this as well. Now, what I will do is let me remove everything from here and the formatter should be there that the photo set level that's there. okay so this is fine so what i will do is inside the gin context what i will do i will use with field method as well as with fields method and then i will create the file as well within the gin context so let me first write it and then i will explain you what i meant by that i'll say with field and this will be the info and info regarding create file, right? Now this is the field and now here I'll say it is an info and info, info will be I am starting while creation. 
Now let me copy it over. Now there'll be one debug information. File PA. Let's do it like this. This is info. Now, besides this, what I will do is I will create a file and then I will use the multi writer over. I will do one thing. I will make use of this error. And what I will say is if error not equal to nil, then do what? Print an error. And inside it, I will use log with field. I will say field, right? Logger dot log with field. And inside this, I'll say loggers dot field. And these could be my field. I'll say, for example, method is create file thing error is true it is an string and then it's an error and that will say error dot error it will print the error and after this I will print the same debug information I'll say and file create. Okay. So you see what I have done inside this method. And okay. Now what exactly I'm doing within here? Uh, what I have done is I'm telling log rust to use the with field inbuilt method. What this method will do is it will print info create file as well within the log with a log level of info and will print this message. Now this line, what it will do is it will print the message with, it should be debug, with debug and create file and with a log level of debug and now in the same way, if error will happen, then it will print the method create file error true to the log along with an error and this error information. So this is how, this is what is the use of the with field and with fields. Now, if in our real world application, we want to have a generic method to be called if any method fails, right? So that generic method we can use with means with field and we can say here is method name and this can be done, right? Okay. So this is just one uh, very, very simple use case, but there can be many more use cases for it. Now you see what the def def definition of this there. It says with field creates an entry for a standard logger, add the field to it. If you want multiple fields, use with field. Basically, it is creating an entry for the standard logger and add whatever we field we pass to it. Now with field, it pass, it creates the entry from the standard logger, add multiple fields for it. So basically the only difference is with fields, we can call add single field to the standard logger. With fields, we can add multiple fields to the standard logger. Okay. So now let's run this program and make you understand of what exactly I meant by this. Now, if I go here, I say go run main.co. My API has started. Now let me call the API to show you how logs will be printed. I have called the API. Now you see. It has started printing the log and it says info is create file that I have passed here. Now the this is the key. This is the value right here. Info is create file and the message is starting file creation info. Now, since I have set the set report caller here, so it is giving me information about the file and the function and the line number, right? Since I'm saying it's an info, so it is setting the level of info to it. Now in a similar way, the second line, debug, create file. Level is debug because I'm using the debug pointer. Messages starting file creation. Now after that, same, it will be for the end file creation. 
Now let's do one thing. Let's print with this and forcefully create an error while creating the file here. Now say I'll say my path is this path actually do not exist. It should give an error when I'll type call the API endpoint. Here. Let me allow access. We'll go here. We'll send the information and let's see. Now it has printed this as well. Right. Now let's see here. What I have done is log with field. So what I have done, I have given two fields. Key is method. Value is create file. Key is error. Value is free. True. Now file and function because we have told our general loggers to log it. And finally the error. Level is error because this is an error. And finally the message related to the error. Right. Now this is all about log rust or the basic information of, about the log rust that I want to explain to you in the coming up sessions. We'll understand how we can implement log rust efficiently and how we can implement logging efficiently in our GIN with our GIN framework and in any of our API within the GIN framework. Thank you very much, guys.